This is the Say It Can't Gamer, and you are live with the MMA Ho! Mixed Martial a ho MMA ho MMA ho MMA MMA ho MMA ho MMA ho MMA ho MMA ho You like to be a mixed martial no way. Oh! From the Queen Studios of New York. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, 14 and 1 pro fighter, Nick Newell is live with the MMA. Oh! What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? I hope you are all wonderful, wonderful. wonderful, wonderful. It is Monday, TGIM. That's right, the MMA Holes Hour is what we call this shit show tonight. And we have a special, special guest tonight. You heard it in the intro, and now I'm going to show you his face. Here he is, the one, the only, Nick Newell, live on the MMA Holes. Nick, what's going on tonight? How's it going, man? Thanks for having me on. All right, man. No, I'm doing I'm doing wonderful, wonderful, as we like to say over here. Now, let me explain what's going on. We have a live chat going on over there, and you are right there. I can see you. We can see you nice and clear from FAA, this wonderful, wonderful gym. We've had some fighters on before from the gym, and now we have the head honcho here. We have the main event of the evening, Nick Newell. Is it an honor? I mean, you've been on TMZ. You've been on Ariel Hilwani. You've been all over the place, but now you're on the MMA holes. What is going through your mind right now? Uh, you know, the the whole experience is very uh, underwhelming uh, or experience. And and uh, that's the only word I can I can really use to describe it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's usually what we get over here. It's underwhelming. That's that's true. Now, I want to give a quick backstory. Uh, you know, tell that person to keep it down in the background. Jesus, we're trying to run a swole show over here. This is, we might have to. Uh -huh. That's all right. Anyway, uh, I want to tell a quick story before we get this uh, interview started over here. Nick Newell is a badass, right? Nick Newell, 14 and 1. A lot of people know who Nick is. He's all over the news right now. But I have to tell a quick story. There was a UFC event. It was uh, McGregor versus Seaver. It was in Boston. And I had the chance to meet Nick. Now, I'm sure you remember this day like it was yesterday, right? Uh, we got to meet. You took a picture with me, right? It's, I mean, it's, of course, right? No. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Check it out, chat room. Show in the chat. And I met him in the hallways over here. Now, I want to tell a quick story. When I saw Nick fight, Nick was an inspiration to me. We run a traveling circus over here, but I'm going to get serious for one second over here. Nick was, I was actually starstruck when I met you the first time. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking really cool. This is a man over here that is battling through a disability and just whooping ass. Not only whooping ass, collecting belts and collecting checks over here. What is it like, I have to know, to be able to kick a man's ass with one arm? Uh, I don't know what's it like doing it with two. This is basically all I know and, and the the life that I know and how I've lived my whole life. So I uh, I don't really know any other way. One second, my gym's... Yeah, what the hell is going on here? This is ridiculous. This is insane. How dare they interrupt us? What is in the background over there? Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, everyone was just done training. Oh, over mm -hmm. here? I sell uh, rash cards out of my gym. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks uh, it looks awesome over there. Now we've had Justin over here, Justin Sumter in your gym over there. Badass Justin, everyone's a huge fan of Justin. And now having you on, it is a big honor. We've had you on briefly at CES, and we see you at events over there, and uh, you do a great job cornering these fighters. But now you're back in the cage, and it's got to be an overwhelming experience, a feeling. You went out on a two fight win streak, and you just felt that the game is done, right? You were done with the game, and then you come back after three years. What was going through your mind coming back into that cage? Uh, I don't know. I was just I was just there to have some fun, to be honest with you. I uh, I and I miss competing and and I miss making that walk and I just wanted to go out there and do my thing and uh, and that's exactly what I did. Honestly, um, I wasn't really too overcome with emotion. I I had my plan of what I would like to have done in the fight and I did exactly that and then. You know, I gave my speech that I had prepared because before every fight, I, I prepare a victory speech because I, I truly believe that I'm, I'm going to win and I believe in my own ability. So I, I gave my speech and, and you know, I, I came in like a man with a job to do. I, I didn't I wasn't over 
really hot under hyped. I I came in just with laser like like focus, ready to uh, do a job that I had. You know, I mean, you don't show up to work every day, fucking ready to kick down the walls like like a maniac. You show up and and a plan of what you want to do and you go about it the smartest way possible and that's the way i treated this fight it was lfa 35 it was a first round neck crank and it was very impressive we actually watched it we did a little fight reaction to that event and man oh man i tell you what you've looked better than ever at 32 years old with that time off you looked fantastic in the cage it looked like it was effortless um now everyone is calling UFC, UFC for Nick Newell. They were saying it before, and I remember Dana White back in the day saying, no, we're not going to let him go into the cage. He's gonna, I wouldn't let him go in there and get beat up, and it wouldn't look right, and blah, blah, blah. But you are a 14-1 and one pro fighter. I mean, with 11 out of those 14 wins, finishes, nine submissions, uh, two, uh, two KOs. I mean, how are you not in the UFC? I, I can't understand this. Yeah, that's whatever. Life's not fair. I'm in a little bit of a different situation. I think we live in a world where people worry too much about what people will say and what uh, people will think. And they're like, well, what if he gets his ass kicked? Well, I think they think it will look bad if a one-handed guy loses, but it's not like one or, or um, O and O or one and O or two and O and four. And, um, you know, I, if I, if I get my ass kicked, I do, I've earned, I've earned the right to get my ass kicked. I feel. And, I do not think that I will get my ass kicked. I think that I will do really well. And I think that I could crack the top 15 within a year. And then who knows from there? Mm -hmm. Nick Newell's live with the MMA holes. It's exciting to have you on here. Now, okay, we have this thing with this whole situation, okay? There is one arm, uh, and you're finishing, guys. Now, I've heard, like, different sides of the story here. Some people say, well, who would want to get in the cage with a guy with one arm? And then other people's, I actually heard people say that it's almost an advantage for you to not to, to submit fighters because of your situation. Have you heard this? And what is your retaliation to that? Uh, yeah, just like anything, man, it's, it, you have your advantages and your disadvantages. I definitely don't think it's like some major advantage, but I make the most of what I do. And, and I don't think it's as big a disadvantage as people mm -hmm. look into it. I actually don't really look into it too much at all. I just worry about myself and what I have to do, like I said, to get the job done. Dollar guy, I punch a clock and I go to work. I don't think, oh my God, this is an advantage. This is an advantage. You'll never hear me screaming, oh, look at what I've overcome. Look at what I've done. Yeah. You know, like I'm just a dude that has a goal and, and you know, a, a dream to be one of the best fighters in the world. And I'm going to wrap one on one, one shoulder. Now, Nick, you have a donation coming in over here for the team. And you're going to be a fucking army to come seven. take them belts off me. A one-armed fighter that is totally badass and awesome. First off, shout out to the MMA. There you go. Holes and Nick never stop fighting, dude. You seem fucking amazing. Thank you, T-Man, for the donation. Now, now T-Man has a situation of his own, actually. Um, I'm sh not sure of what the disability is called, but he's in a situation himself, and he makes the best of it. He does DJing on YouTube, and he's overcoming an obstacle in his life. So, T-Man, thank you so much for that. I do appreciate it. We take donations from disability children. Uh, T-Man, stop donating. Anyway, Nick, what do you have to say about that? A lot of people are inspired by your story, and it, it has to humble you when you hear these things from people that actually have disabilities or whatever is in their life troubling them. Yeah, it's super cool. You know, I didn't, I didn't start like, Oh, I'm going to prove this or I'm going to prove that. It's just something that I always believed was possible. You know, I had Jim Abbott growing up that I, who I looked up to and, and people are saying they look up to me like, like I looked up to him, you know? So like that's, that makes me feel really good. And, um, you know, any way I can help and inspire someone is, is, is an awesome thing you know i i every year i spend in, um and kids come from all over the country to meet me and a bunch of other you know successful people that have gone out and done their own thing despite having one hand mm -hmm. and you know it's cool I, I i like kids and i like um even adults i i like sharing my story and contributing any way i can to to do stuff like that mm -hmm. you know now, everyone in the chat, I keep on seeing this over and over again, they're, they're saying that they want to see you fight Floyd Mayweather. Not only do they want you to come into the UFC, they want you to go after a Floyd Mayweather. I mean, what is your answer to this? Would you fight Floyd Mayweather? Would you want to make that your debut in the UFC? Would you look forward to something like that? To me, that's the number one fight that I, that I want. 
you know, uh, I think, <laughs> uh if you really want to come over to mma like come come through me that's okay you know our uh my style is a nightmare for him absolute nightmare he'll never fight me in a million years but that's a i think that is a, a fight that i would would be very very interested in to represent the sport of mma and wrestling and everything that he's not i am mm-hmm. floyd mayweather versus nick newell i mean who wouldn't want to watch that? I mean, everyone would sign up for that shit. I mean, you have CM Punk in the UFC. People are like, if CM Punk could be in the UFC, why the hell is Nick Newell not in the UFC? And then they're saying, Artem Lobov. If Artem Lobov's in the UFC, why not Nick Newell in the UFC? Like, people are saying these things, trying to compare and say that you should be in the UFC over other fighters in the UFC. But now we're seeing other fighters, Justin Gaethje, uh, Dustin Poirier, um, Frankie Edgar. We see people coming out saying, yeah, you deserve to be in the UFC. What do you? What goes through your mind when you see your colleagues? You see these other fighters out there putting their neck out on the line, say, "Yeah, get this guy in the UFC." Uh, real, recognize real. You know, I've uh, I fought Justin and I had a competitive first round. Some people even gave me that that first round. He beat me in a second, but whatever. And he's fought a lot of world class guys, and and I think he knows that I'm capable. And Dustin, I've trained with a lot, and and he's a very very good fighter. So if he thinks I'm capable, you know that that says a lot to me. And there's just you know, you can see a real fighter. Real fighters can see a real fighter. They don't see a guy with one hand. They see a guy with skill. And that's the, the way that I've always looked at me. I never looked at myself as a one-handed guy that fights. I, I look at myself as a guy that fights that happens to have one hand. So it's uh, that's the way to look at it. And I, I'm getting a lot of respect from my peers and, and the industry, you know, guys that say, oh, who would want to fight them? And then I got guys saying, fuck it, I'll fight that guy. Uh, and that means a lot to me. Mm. Do you feel that guys like get into the cage and it's kind of a lose lose situation? Like if they lose, they lose to a guy with one arm. If they win, they beat up a guy with one arm. What do you have to say when when knuckleheads say stuff like that? Yeah, no, it is a lose lose situation because I'm gonna if rap one you fight on one shoulder, you, you lose. I'm gonna rap you hold on the other shoulder. Hold on one second. You're gonna need a fucking that army. Just don't need Come it. take them belts off me. Let's see what he says. I am the only person to ever shut down Nick Newell. Nick, the MMA holes host, is a dick. Hmm. Riding bitch, just hang up on him and do something productive. <laughs> How dare you, Zach? Uh, Zach is making fun of me. Anyway, go back. Fuck you, Zach, and thank you for the $2. Um, it's right. lose-lose because if you fight me, you're just going to lose. That's it. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the only option is to lose. <laughs> so it is It is a lose-lose situation then. then you're, you're yeah, because you're going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> So that's like the only option is that you lose. Hey. It's just a lose situation. Yeah. Well, we're live with Nick Newell. Nick Newell is a badass 14 and one pro MMA fighter looking to get into the UFC. And there's rumblings that you signed with a new uh, manager or you're working with another manager now that happens to be Justin Gaethje's manager. Uh, can you elaborate on this situation? Yeah, so I have a manager that I've used for many, many years who's a, a, a great guy, and he's awesome, and, and I'm going to work with him forever because he does just such an amazing job. Um, but I needed someone that had uh, a lot of leverage, you know, a lot of um, say, and a, a guy that had the connections. You know, I just needed one more person on my team. So I added uh, Ali Al – I can't even say his last name – Al Bediziz or – I don't know. I've known him from World Series of Fighting. He – um. You know, he's someone that's always kind of actually had my back and, and stuck up for me. And when I, uh, at a time when Justin Gagey was hot, nobody wanted to fight him. And, and I said, I said, fuck that. I'll fight him. I don't care. You know? And they were like, oh, we don't want Nick to fight Justin. Cause, uh, they're the two, um, biggest guys we have and we want to build them up and Nick needs to do this and that. And he said, no, give the guy a chance, you know? And, and, and he's the one that made sure I got that fight and, and I lost, but it's like, still, I, I wanted that fight. So he, he always believes in me and, and, and that's why I'm working with him. It's the only blemish, right? Is a TKO in the second round. And I mean, that was a man, that was a crazy fight. You guys are going at it in that fight. Um, and you fought a ranked UFC fighter. Justin Gaethje is, is a proven badass over there. So the one blemish on your record is, is to a guy like that. Would you love to get a rematch with him? Yeah, if they offered me a fight against him 100 times, I'd take it 100 times. I'm not here to to cherry pick or do anything like that. I mean, I want fights that are going to move me up the rankings and, and build my star. I mean, obviously, if some guy that does nothing for me comes and wants to fight me i'm gonna be like dude like come on you know but um but i have you know i'm third i just turned 32 but i still have a few more years in me but i want to make these years count sure 
Now, you, do you well, feel I would like fight him if they if they offer that as my first fight, I would take it. Do you so you would take that right now? So now, I mean, you're 32. Some may say that you're in your prime, right? 32 years old. You've been there. You've been through the storm. This is. I mean, you look fantastic in your last fight. Would you say if, if they're like, here you go? You're gonna rap one on one shoulder. Oh, here comes. <laughs> you're gonna rap you on the other shoulder. And you're gonna need a fucking army Let's see. to come take them belts Let's off me. Back. Justin fouled Nick at least five times hard knees to the head while Nick was down. Don't forget. Hold on a second. That you dick riding bitch host. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. That's really nice of you. He says you fouled Justin Gaethje with knees. What is he talking about here? Zach, Zach, get a life. Anyway, he's saying you fouled. No, he he fouled, he fouled me. Mm -hmm. He me in the head while I was on the ground. But honestly, I, I don't think he did it on purpose. Yeah. And, uh... And it's whatever, man. I came back. I got back up after it, and I kept fighting. So, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. He won. He was a he was a better man that day. And I he, I sound like I complained about the fight, but I I thought I came off as like kind of being a little bitch. So I uh, I kind of took a step back from that. Mm -hmm. And I actually uh, we're cool, you know. So it's whatever. He he won. And if I got knee in the head, if I didn't get knee in the head, it's it doesn't matter. He he won. Um, and that's that, you know. Yeah, well, and you were saying that there was an injury, too, that you were battling throughout the fight, too, right? There was something, you you injured your leg? Yeah, I just sound like a bitch when I talk like that, though. Yeah. You know, i just saying that my last couple of camps, I, I had a, a bunch of injuries that built up, and, and that's that. There you go. We're live with Nick Newell, live on the MMA Holes, 14-1 and one pro fighter. Now, I want to just go back a second here. I've heard a lot of stories about, you know, your rise, but I don't know why you got into mixed martial arts. I mean, uh, dealing with what you're dealing with, right? Uh, growing up, were you bullied, or what made you decide to just get into a combat sport? What was the reason for that? Uh, growing up, I always wanted to be a Ninja Turtle, a Ghostbuster, a pro wrestler. Those were like my three favorite things. So uh, my neighbor, when I, right before I got to high school, we were watching a lot of wrestling, and he said he was going to join the wrestling team, but we were watching WWE wrestling, not real wrestling. Mm. And uh, I was like, okay, whatever, I'll join the wrestling team. And I just joined the wrestling team, and it kind of took off. And then when I got to college... I uh, I discovered MMA and I, and I kind of started training that and I got hooked to that as well, you know. So when I graduated, I still wanted to compete, so I started fighting. Yeah, well, I mean, it seems like a quick rise for you too. I mean, you were pretty young when you got into the sport. You've been doing this for a long time since two thousand and nine uh, as a pro. Uh, when did you start AMI fighting? Uh, I had three fights, three amateur fights. Um, the reason why I went pro real soon was because I beat really good guys amateur, you know, and uh, and I thought I was ready. The times were a little different. Now you have to get a, a few more amateur fights before you go pro, but I felt good and I felt like I was ready. And there was no athletic commission back then, so I wanted to turn pro before the athletic commission came in so they couldn't be like, well, you only have one hand. You should just fight amateur. It's not a good idea to go um, pro. So it was important to me that I turn pro before they came so I could already be like already winning as a pro. Do you think that they pushed you pro quick too because of the situation? It would have got ratings, and because you had skill with this, uh, they could have. You're gonna wrap uh, one that. on one shoulder. Hold on, we got you're Vlad. You're on the other shoulder. Vlad and you're gonna need a fucking yeah. army to come take them belts off me. Look, you've been looking at some old painting of Mary Magdalene, and damn, she must have been stupid thick. Wouldn't mind her throwing that ass my way. Do you think that Mary Magdalene is hot? Be honest, Nick. I don't even. I don't really. Yeah, know I don't know. It's, it's a religious. Show. I don't even know what they're fucking doing. Nick is married, by the way. Congratulations on uh, how is married life? Is that the, is that the Virgin Mary? Yeah. The, well, Mary Magdalene was when I think they threw stones at her. I think that's what happened. Not Jesus's mom. The one that was kind of like a floozy. I don't know if you're familiar with the Catholic religion, but I think she was a floozy. Oh no, 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 I'm yeah. not. She got around. Anyway, <laughs> how's married my wife, life? My wife. My wife is uh, is Catholic. I am not. Oh, okay. And everything's going good. No, no divorce papers yet. You guys, you guys are still together. Everything's fine. It's, she surprises me every day. I, I kind of expect every night when I come home for her to be ready to, to serve me those papers, but <laughs> but not yet. No, we we she's awesome. She's yeah. amazing. I could I could do a whole podcast talking about how amazing of a person she is. A uh, very successful, driven woman. Um, Beautiful, athletic, you know the the whole package. So I mean, I, I sound like a turd when I when I say stuff like that, but I'm I'm I definitely scored. I'm a lucky guy, and uh, she scored too because she, uh, you know, got the hottest dude on the planet. Sure. 
Well, the second Onyx. <laughs> I mean, I'm here. But uh, now, is it tough for her? I mean, listen, you're a, you're a pro fighter. You're a pro athlete, right? Is it tough for her? Like, I'm sure there's just pussy being thrown at you left and right. Like, what does she do? Does she show up at the events and watch you fight with a stick ready to beat some bitches? Or how does it work? <laughs> she doesn't care. She knows I'm not going to – she knows I'm not going to – um do anything stupid or cheat on her or anything like that so it's not really a big deal she knows like uh stuff like that happens and and i think i like post enough about her and how much i love her that i don't really get uh too many too many messages you know check out nick newell it's at notorious newell check him out on instagram twitter uh he's on facebook as well now um it's it's i tell you what i do watch you on social media and you guys seem like you are completely in love and it's fantastic it's it's refreshing to see but more importantly I saw that you're, you're done with The Walking Dead. You've had enough, it looks like. You're watching it, but you don't know why you're watching it. I saw one of your stories over there. I watched it. Yeah, the same fucking thing. sucks. Explain to me what is going on with this show. Has it hit the wall? No, the last... You mean Jump the Shark? Yeah. The last one um, wasn't bad. No? It wasn't bad. So what do you think of this Negan storyline? Not to spoil anything. Do you think uh, he's going to be a good guy or a bad guy or something like that? He's going to join the team? What's going on? Are they going to no, kill No, he's just such a fucking turd. Like... <laughs> Who would listen to that guy? Like that's like it's more unrealistic that someone in his like regime wouldn't just shoot him in the fucking head and everyone would be like, Okay, cool, now we can be normal. You know, like it's more it's more realistic for like zombies to be walking around eating people than for someone not to kill that dude within his own mm. uh team. Yeah, it's it's kind of gotten crazy. And like you said, jump the shark. It's a uh, happy days term right there. Uh, yeah, it has jumped the shark. The show is it's gone way too long. The fr- the- you're gonna wrap one on one shoulder. Hold on a second. What we got here? Wrap the other oh, on the Zach other shoulder. Back. And you're gonna need a <laughs> fucking yeah. army to come take them belts off me. Okay, here we go. Team Will Smith, Cage Titans, 135 pound champ. There you go. Team Will Smith, Cage Titans, 135 pound champ. What do you say about that, Nick? I say he is a 135 pound champ. Yeah. Um, he's one of my students, Will Smith, mm-hmm. and he's an absolute animal. He's five and one, and uh, he's about to win his uh, the Cage Titans 135 pound title on uh, April 14th in Plymouth, Mass. You should go. It's going to be a great show. There's a lot of awesome fights, and 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 he's definitely like one of the most savage dudes. He'll he'll run you across the. He's a 135 pounder. He's massive. He's got an awesome double leg, uh, good jab, and and he's just unpredictable. And his dreadlocks fly all over the place. You can't even tell uh, what's coming at you. You know, let's talk about the gym a little bit. When did you start FAA? Is it is it your brainchild here? Uh, tell me a little bit more about the gym. So uh, it's it's kind of mine, but uh, it's FACT I own, and I have a good crew of fighters, but also. Um, the name came from Fighting Arts Academy in Springfield, Massachusetts. So I own one in West Haven, and my coach owns one in Springfield, Massachusetts, and there's another one in Fitchburg, uh, Mass. So there's three of them. Mm-hmm. And my coach out of Springfield, I basically took his name and opened up my own gym. Oh, okay, so I see what you're saying there. Nick Newell is live with the MMA Holes. FAA is the gym. And when we started this channel, we only been on for a year and a half. We had Justin the Fort Sumter, who was our first uh, pro fighter ever on here. Now, I mean, this guy in your gym, complete badass. He did that little video with the head kicks, which has been all over the place. Um, I'm sure you're sick of hearing about you can't block head kicks and all that bullshit. Um, but now you show a video that you can actually block head kicks. And Justin the Fort Sumter was helping you out. How hard does Justin the Fort Sumter kick? How hard does this man kick? Yeah, I don't know because I don't let him kick me as hard as he can. <laughs> Chill out. I, I want to have kids one day. I want to start a family, so I can't have this dude kicking me full force. <laughs> so he takes it easy on you. I mean, this guy is he is something else. He really is something else. Justin Sumter, who's on a tear right now, what, a six-fight win streak out of your gym? Uh, it seems like all you have is badasses over here. Will Justin fight on a card with Nick Newell? Would you guys uh, do that together? Are you looking to do something like that? Uh, I'd rather not because I'm his coach, so I'd, I'd like to give him the most attention that I can I can give him um, and kind of be there for him. And I feel like me fighting on the same card would kind of be a distraction. you know. Um, of course, we have a wonderful team and people that could corner him if I wasn't there. But you know, I'd rather fight on different cards, but the same show. Mm-hmm. Just different cards. There you go. Nick Newell live with the MMA Holes. And uh, listen, I am. I said it in the beginning of the uh, the interview that I'm a big fan, uh, inspired by Nick, and he's overcome so many obstacles, and he makes it look good. He makes it look easy. 
I mean, super easy. You go in there and you just. I'm gonna wrap you on one shoulder, and I'm gonna wrap you on the other shoulder, and you're gonna need a fucking army to come take them belts off me. Zach has to say. Fuck a head kick. I want to see a video of Nick blocking a triangle. Okay, so fuck a head kick. He wants to see you blocking a triangle. Nick, what do you you have to say about this? Never been triangled in uh, (laughs) competition. You know, I uh, I'm a black belt in jujitsu. I'm a college wrestler, and and I can. I'm actually very hard to triangle, so uh, you can't block something that like no one can get on you. <laughs> is there is there a situation? You gotta wrap one on one shoulder. Jesus, they're coming in hot. Shoulder, Justin Fultz. You're gonna need a Justin fucking Fultz. army to come take them belts off me. Right, Justin Fultz says, "What's up, you cocksuckers? I fucking love you all like my bitch, especially you, Chris." Thank you, Justin. Justin loves all of us. Hey, one second, yeah. one second. I'll be right back. Someone just worked my gym. Okay. Be under a minute. All right. Sounds good. All right, so Nick Nick Newell live with the MMA holes. I saw that Justin called me up. I don't know what Justin was calling up about, but <laughs> I'm gonna open up the full. Hey, you called? No, I didn't call wow. Justin. That's weird. Justin was calling me up. Anyway, we're live with Nick Newell on the MMA holes hour. Get your questions in the chat, and I will be opening up the phone lines very shortly. A 14 and one pro fighter over here. We're looking oh, okay. to get him into Bellator. I mean, that's the way to go, right? I'm not Bellator. <laughs> Hello. The UFC. Or just get him somewhere. I mean, let's go, man. What is the UFC waiting for? They need to get Nick Newell involved. Okay, I'll see you. All right. Here he goes. There he is. Nick, welcome back. I'm just showing your Instagram over here. And what is the hashtag? Is there a hashtag going around to get you into the UFC? What is it? Uh, Nick to the UFC. Newell to UFC. What are we looking at? What should we hashtag to get you into this UFC? Is it on? Yeah, yeah there we go. Okay. Newell to UFC, New, hashtag Newell to UFC, or just in general, Newell World Order. Okay, there you go. Guys, shoot a hashtag over there. Tag uh, at Notorious Newell. Notorious, where did you get that name? I know everyone's comparing you to Conor McGregor, the Notorious, but you are just Notorious, correct? Yeah, that he fucking took my nickname. I was on TV in the United States first, you know? <laughs> um, I had no idea who he was when I started fighting. I had that nickname since I started as amateur and he's the notorious i'm notorious um it sounds better on me notorious nick newell but he's the most famous fighter of all time so i guess uh i guess i gotta tip my hat to him on that one but uh i mean who gives a fuck doesn't pull name the beast in the it's the pit pool. why is everyone giving me a fucking hard time it's just, <laughs> nickname and it sounds better on me anyway that's true it does it sounds fantastic i'll fight him you know (laughs) i'll fight him (laughs) would you fight him mcgregor now i mean of course anyone would fight him right i mean the money right alone i mean even if you thought you didn't have a chance why wouldn't you step in a cage with him right but i mean what would you say say hypothetically speaking nick newell goes to the ufc which you are going to the ufc because i I see these things conor mcgregor gets thrown at you he doesn't want to retire he doesn't want to ride off in the sunset he's like i'll fight nick newell what would happen in that fight? Honestly, from from deep down in your heart, where do you see that fight going if you were to fight a Conor McGregor? I definitely have to watch out for his counter. Um, I would have to kind of pressure him. He's a lefty, so I'd have to work my jab, get inside, and, and, and take him down to the ground. You know. What is the most difficult type of fighter to fight for you? Uh, I don't know. I fought everyone, so it doesn't really matter. I'm a well-rounded fighter, so I'm good at just beating people where they're not good. Zero fear. Is is Rob Anulli, is he going to the UFC? Tell, be honest. He's not watching, of course. But is he going to the UFC, this guy? Is he ever going to be a UFC fighter? How do you know Rob? Uh, I, I know these people. I'm like Mystic Moss over here. I know everything. I know it all. No, he's, a, he's in the chat a lot. He pops in a lot over here, so I know he trains with you guys. And, uh, oh man! What's yeah, Rob's gonna, Rob's gonna make it for sure. Yeah, he's gonna be the next McGregor. That's 100%. What I'm he's gone. Yeah, <laughs> he's gone. He is McGregor. He is McGregor. He's gonna one day McGregor's gonna no show and he's gonna fill in. Yeah, <laughs> Nick Newell live with the MMA holds. It's a quite of an honor to have you over here. I will. Uh, I will say this: Rob calls in. Rob is a, is a uh, a beast, and he he's just two years in, you know, and he he comes in, he works hard, and. And he does his thing, so um, I'm really proud of him, and, and he's someone I really enjoy having in the gym. Besides you at the gym, who's the guy to look out for? Who who is the guy to look at the at the gym? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say because then people listening won't want to fight them. I yeah, no one's watching. So, but you had one rider die. What one, one person in a zombie apocalypse? If you, if you come, 
if you come to my gym and on any given day you can find fucking 12 people that will are just absolute savages so to just pick one of them out um oh like a, super you know, chat you know, so yeah all right, you can, I can if give you. I can. I have to like Floyd, stop and, and write a list, just like his left to tell hand. you all the people that are are fucking insanely good at my gym. Yeah, you do have a bunch of killers over there at FAA. Pulse Reloaded says, if you think, uh, if he thinks he's beating Floyd, he's lost his mind. Well, I don't want to say the right left. Well, he says like his left hand. But what do you think? I mean, people saying that you can't beat Floyd Mayweather. What What would you say to that? You said in the beginning of the interview you have no problem fighting Floyd Mayweather. I mean, why do you think you, he can't beat Floyd Mayweather? For God's sakes, your ground game is tight as fuck. What? I mean, what What is your counter to that? I could run at him and fucking jump guard and beat him. You yeah. know, like it doesn't it doesn't matter. But he's never stopped my takedown. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, like me. What's he gonna do? He stands Philly shell. I grab his leg, toss him on his ass. He might as well start the fight on his butt. <laughs> is that is that? How it, yeah, he, I don't. I can't see him having a shot against you either. To be completely honest, and I'm not dick riding over here. But I see in the chat a lot of people in a want- boxing match. In a boxing match, you'd fuck me up. But like when he's we're talking MMA, he's talking MMA. I'm not talking boxing. What do you think about boxing and mixed martial arts? Like a lot of people, there are purists of boxing. There are purists of mixed martial arts. It's stupid. Arts. It's stupid. If you if you do one or the other, someone that does that is going to beat your ass. Mm. If you're an MMA guy and you go to boxing, you're going to lose. And if you're a boxer and you go to MMA, you're going to lose. You know, unless you fight someone that f- fucking sucks. You know, every every once in a while, there's there's guys like I know uh, Ray Mercer threw a bomb and knocked out Tim Sylvia. You know, but he also got submitted by Kimbo. So it's it is what it is, man. It's 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 kind of a stupid like what if thing that everyone wonders about. But as soon as you talk about fighting a boxer, if I'm like, oh, I'll fight Floyd Mayweather, and then everyone fucking gets interested because there's this aura around it. Mm-hmm. Nick Newell live with the MMA holes. Now, what if Bellator came calling? Scott Coker's like, hey, Nick, fuck the of UFC. Course. You would do Bellator. Yeah, let's let's why not? You know, Bellator runs a great show, so um, you know, I'd definitely be interested in in, in fighting in Bellator. That's that's uh, that's a good league over there, man. They come to Connecticut a lot, and I I really like the product, so uh, of course. There you go, Nick Newell live in the MMA holes. What is the dream fight for Nick Newell? If you had to say one fight that you always wanted to have happen, what would be your dream fight? Uh like you t- well now i mean everyone's talking about floyd mayweather so i want to do that fight because i make a fucking ton of money so i'd say that's my dream fight obviously you know to um if i could fight for the ufc title would be amazing um i have a lot of work cut out for me and i have a lot to do to get there though i uh my first goal is just to get there and and, and start winning you know so i i, I don't want to get too ahead of myself but obviously that would be a, a great opportunity and then um you know, I never really, I don't like to call anyone out, but um, I'm just, I just like fighting, man. It's there's not a certain person I look at that I'm like, fuck that guy, I want to fight that. That's my dream fight. You know, yeah. I just don't really care. I do it for fun, and and I'm a martial artist before I'm a fighter, and I'll fight whoever. Now, everyone in the chat, I don't know why they want to know who you think Khabib versus Tony Ferguson, who wins that fight. Everyone is just needs to know from you what do you think about that fight um you know shout out to both those guys because they both support me getting to the ufc tony ferguson uh you know gave me his approval and and khabib and i now we're working with the same manager he he wants me in and you know it's uh i like both those guys i think stylistically it, it comes down to whether tony can catch khabib or if khabib can control uh tony from top but i don't see tony uh submitting khabib off his back darth bane wants to know piggybacking off of this how would you deal with a khabib or 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 tony fight like if one of them won and you had to take on one how would you handle both fighters Um, i think tony i would i would work my my top control and avoid the submissions and kind of go from there and with khabib um I'd assume he's so good at what he does, you know, that I'd have to fight through some adversity and, and I'm, I'm really hard to hold down. So if someone takes me down, I'm, I'm very good at getting back up and I'd have to probably fight through that a few times and, and 
try to uh, score how I can on the feet, you know, or catch a catch a guillotine or something like that. You know? It's funny. Um, I saw a raging Al Iaquinta's uh, interview about talking about Habib and how he would need big bucks to fight the guy. He's he's a ranked fighter in the UFC, and he's like, I would need big bites to even get in the uh, big bucks to get in the cage with uh, Habib. Would you feel that way? Is he that scary of a guy? Eh, fuck it. He's still a guy, you know. Yeah. So he's still a human. What's uh, what's wrong? What's wrong with that? You know, I'll, I'll fight anyone, so it's not really that big a deal. You you come across as extremely confident, right? Uh, and I've met you in person. You you definitely have like a, a little bit of a swag, right? All right, there we go. I'm listening. Sorry. <laughs> uh, where do you get this confidence from? And have you ever feel terrified in the cage? Uh, of course, of course. I'm. Uh, you're always scared, a little scared, you know. Uh, but I just don't really care whether I win or lose that much. I just go out there and I just try my hardest, and I, I come well prepared, and I come ready to fight. So that kind of takes away a lot of the nerves. Uh, at the end of the day, whether I, I, I win or lose, I still feel like I win. I have an awesome life. I have awesome students. I, um, great family, great wife, you know, so, uh, really I have nothing to be ashamed of at the end of the day. I just go out there and I always try my hardest and I always fight with everything I have. So that kind of takes away a lot of the stress looking at it that way. It's funny, like, I always like to ask the fighters when they hear their walkout song happen and they're walk, doing that walk to the cage, how do you keep, how do you keep everything down over there? Oh, we got a guest? Oh, we got a... Yeah, I don't even pay attention to the music. Um, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So you just basically, you're just in the zone from the very beginning. Oh, my God. Was there a boat coming in? There's some uh, feedback. Anyway, uh, so you just basically zone out what's going on, and you just walk into that cage. You have a job to get done, and that's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. When the cage closes, when the cage – what's going on in the background over there? Do I have to take care of somebody or – Me? No, I just had a – I have a um, – I had to give something to my wrestling coach. Oh, okay. um, but – uh, oh man, my wife's calling me. That's why Jesus she doesn't Christ. know that I had an interview. I'm supposed to be home by now. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up the phone lines. We're gonna take a, qu a couple of quick calls. We're gonna let you go. But um, I do want to ask you this question: When that cage closes, is it true? Like when the cage closes, does everything kind of like hit you at once? How do you feel when they lock that cage and you're ready to go to battle? When the cage closes, I just don't care. I just have a job to do. You know, mm -hmm. like I said. Uh, I stay calm and I just try to pick my shots and, and do my thing. When I let emotion get over me and I get overly hyped, I don't fight well. And that's happened many times um, in my career. Performances I've been kind of upset with and things I felt like I could have done better. So when I stay uh, calm, cool, and collected, I do much better. There you go. Nick Newell live with the MMA Holes. The phone lines are open at 516-522-0267. You guys wanted them open. You better call quick because Nick does not. Yeah, have I can. I, I think I can only take one though because I really gotta. I gotta get going. All right, one call. Make it good, you sick fucks in that chat. Anyway, um, let me ask you a question now. The um, does your situation with the arm does that come in handy when you're having when you're intimate with your wife? Be honest with me. Do you get a little kinky with that thing or what? And be honest. It's just you. And no, yourself. only with your mom. <laughs> God damn it! My mom always walks around satisfied. It's ridiculous. All right, here we go. You are live with Nick Newell. Get your question out. What's your name? Where are you from? Oh, I think they're scared. All right. Someone else calling. Jesus Christ. 516-522-0267. Get in with notorious Nick Newell right now. Okay. So here we go. Let's try this again. That's oh, a block number. You're live with the MMA holes and Nick Newell. What's your name and what's your question? Hey, it's uh, Mr. Mitch here. Hey. Just, uh, that I'd call up and say hello to Nick and hope, hope it goes well with uh, getting into the UFC or, or Bellator. I think it's pretty cool to see him in Bellator. So you're saying you, you want to see uh, him either in the UFC or Bellator, okay. And any question for Nick? Um, have you been to Australia yet, Nick? Actually, yeah, Mystic Mitch is actually from Australia. He wants to know if you've been to Australia. Oh, uh, no, my cousin's from Perth, though. Oh, there you go. All, All right. right. Oh, sweet. Uh, hopefully you could get over here and fight one time and be able to see you, but just wishing you good luck, and uh, hopefully you make it in uh, one of the bigger leagues, and they pay you a shit ton of money. 
There you go, Mitch. To thank punch you. Floyd in the fucking his little fucking face. <laughs> thank you. All right, Mitch. Thanks for the call. Yeah, he's actually calling in from Australia. There you go, Mitch. Mystic Mitch calling in from Australia. Very cool. Would you like to fight in Australia? I mean, that's got to be something else, right? The down under. Yeah, I'd like to just go to Australia and just start a fight there or not. I'd like to go there, throw around some uh, boomerangs, eat some uh, Vegemite, and and have a good old time. Uh, save a, a baby from a dingo, uh, throw some shrimp on the Barbie, and just <laughs> and just enjoy the the scenery. You know. If the if the money was right, would you fight a kangaroo? Be honest, would you fight a kangaroo? Then you'd have to only buy you box a kangaroo. You know, <laughs> you don't fight them. You just That's box true. them. I can but, see. You. Thank you for having me on the show. I really am sorry. Man. All right, Nick. I, Thank you for coming it's on. It's 10 o'clock. It takes me like half an hour to get home. I still have to shower. I have to talk to my wife. She goes to bed. Um, I I, I can't. I got I to gotta head out, though. We got you. Nick, any uh, shout-outs to the sponsors before you leave? Uh, no. If you want to see my sponsors, you want to see everything I have, follow my uh, page at Notorious Noel on Instagram and Twitter. There you go. Thanks for coming on, and good luck in the future, Nick. See you soon. Yeah, thank you. All right, there is Nick Newell, notorious Nick Newell, calling in on the MMA holes. There it is. That was a picture from McGregor versus Seaver in Boston, and that was that. There he is, the notorious Nick Newell. We Listen, we had a little cringe, but we got the questions out that we needed to get out, and there it is, Nick Newell. Let me know in the chat with the ones if you think that notorious Nick Newell belongs in the UFC. Hit me with the twos if you think no, 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 no. No! No, 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 no. There you go. No. That's right. Nick Newell coming on here. It's, it was good to, uh, for Nick to come on. We've wanted Nick on for a while now, before he even decided to come back to, the, uh, to mixed martial arts. And he did come back and caught a big victory over here. Nick Newell trying to get into the UFC. And I think he, I think he deserves it. I really do think he deserves to be into the UFC. Check out his record over here. There's some people that just aren't too familiar with Nick. Look at this. Tech, I mean, one loss to Justin Gaethje, and then he rattles off three in a row. He took some time off after these two victories, and uh, he gets a crazy quick submission. First round, LFA. See the chat over here, and wow, look at that. Everyone is saying yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes Nick needs to become a UFC extraordinaire fighter in mixed martial arts. A lot of ones over there. Vlad's given a five. I don't know. I'm not sure what flat, a five means or a seven or an L, but there you go. How about that? How about that shit over there? Live on the MMA holes. Nick Newell. We're going to take a couple of phone calls and see your thoughts on <laughs> you're going soft. I asked him if he fucking pleasures his wife with his arm. What is wrong with you, Jay Smooth? I mean, <laughs> for fuck's sake. Let's see Ariel Hawani ask that. 516-522-0267. Get in on the lines. And there we go. Newell versus Sage. I would like to see something like that. When... Nick Newell's, I'm going to say when. I'm not going to say if Nick Newell gets into the UFC. I'm going to say when because he is linked up with some major players in the UFC. And people are really putting their neck out on the line to, to get Nick into the UFC. I think he belongs there. I really do think he belongs there. All right, let's see what they say. 541, you're live with the MMA Holes. What's your name and what's on your mind? What up, man? It's Dan from Oregon. Dan from Oregon. What's up, Danny? What's going on? No, I'm not man. Enjoying the tail end of this interview. I didn't catch all of it. All right. Hey, I'm going to throw a fight out there because I don't know how likely Floyd to come in and take an ass whooping. I just don't see it ever happening. But how about we fight for a UFC contract, him versus Sage Northcutt, man? I don't think Sage could beat him, a one-armed guy. I don't think so. Really? So, Well, we know that Sage's ground game is a little suspect, and Nick is a fucking, fucking ninja on the ground. So, I mean... Uh, yeah, I would like to see that. Oh, super We got Tommy chat. Bones in with a super chat. Let's see what Tommy has to say. Why didn't he get a prostatic made of Fear Factor gel? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you, Tommy <laughs> Bones. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? I don't know about all that. <laughs> hey, Robbie, what's up, man? We threw you out there, Robbie. Uh, anything else, Dan? For real, man. Look at Sage. They have been picking the bottom of the barrel that they have to offer in that 155 pound division, and they can't pick anybody that he can beat. The Randy Brown guy was like the same UFC freak Dana White show, whatever, and there's still no one for him to beat. So, well, what they picked like a freaking 
Italian or something now. They're going for all the foreigners that got no wrestling. So I think Nick Newell takes them out, and then maybe he gets uh, Mayweather too. Who knows? Back to you, though, man. I'm out. All right, Dan. Thanks for the call. How funny is that? Um, Nick Newell versus Sage. But I just saw in the chat that Christine jumped in, and Justin called me. Justin Sumter called me uh, <laughs> as I'm inter interviewing Nick, and Nick happens to be Justin's coach. And he's like, hey, man, did you call me? And during the interview, apparently Alexa in the other room, that possessed bitch, uh, decided to call up Justin during the interview. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, yeah, it is what it is. So there is that. What do you guys think about Justin's uh, Nick Newell versus Sage Northcutt? What I want to see is this. I, I don't want to see Nick come in and immediately fight a ranked guy. Like, I don't want to see that. But a Sage Northcutt is not a bad idea. Um, I would like to see someone that people know of. You know, that'd be interesting. Uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather's a little far-fetched. We're not going to be seeing something like that. But um, people say CM Punk. I don't think that's going to happen. CM Punk is a little heavier. I don't think that's going to happen. But maybe Sage? Possible. Uh, 636, you're live with the MMA Holes. What's your name and what's on your mind? Hey, um... I was just thinking, like, Nick Newell could fight Floyd Mayweather. Do you catch you gotta rap one on one shoulder. Hold on one second. You're gonna need a fucking army Hold that thought. to come take them belts off me. There you go. Nick versus CM Punk for a contract. Nick versus CM Punk for a contract. I just think uh, CM Punk is just too big. I don't even know Ooh, where that Nick fight would happen. Nick versus CM Punk. That'd be interesting. Yeah, well, Nick. That'd be an interesting fight to see. Like, maybe Nick versus CM Punk to see who would fight Floyd Mayweather for the first time. That'd be an interesting fight, I think. Yeah, it is interesting. It is an interesting fight, but CM Punk struggled to get to 170. Nick fought his last fight at a catch weight at 165. Um, I think Nick Newell belongs at a 155, uh, but that's, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. The I question don't is, like, I, I don't know this, but did CM Punk cut any weight in his fight, UFC 203? Yeah, hell of a lot. To get to 170, he was oh, drained. Oh, super chat. We got Tommy Bones with a super chat. He should be a huge porn star plowing all holes. <laughs> Tommy, that's what I was alluding to. I mean, I thought he'd be a hit with the ladies. That's that's what I was thinking. Anyway, um, yeah, CM Punk did cut a ton of weight to get to there. And if you, I don't know if you remember at the Wayans, he looks sickly at the Wayans. But he, I think he's. Oh yeah, fight. I remember that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think he's fighting well, at one seventy again. Possibility, maybe. All right. Thanks for the call, my man. Hey, problem. All right, so there we go. There we go. The Super Chat's on fire right now. If you want to donate, get a couple of quick ones. We're only going a couple more minutes, and then we're going to wind this shit down. And uh, that's that. Uh, uh, DM. Let's see. I'm getting DMs. Here we go. 516-522-0267. Uh, get in on the lines. We're going to only go for uh, 11 more minutes, and then we're going to take you to Jesse. Okay, what happened here? All right, so Jesse canceled. I'm not streaming tonight. Something came up. Okay. Hmm. All right. Here we go. Let's get Jose. You are live with the MMA holes. Jose, 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 Jose. Hey, Chris. El Diablo has returned. What's going on, brother? Uh, I'm doing good. We had uh, Notorious Nick Newell, and I honestly have to say he was good. He was calm. He was cool, collective. The chat room was AIDS. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it was Nick Newell. What were your thoughts? I wanna, I wanna throw a little bit of a different angle at you, and I wanna see what people think about this. I think that the fucking reason that um, he's being denied is because guys don't fucking like the idea of getting their ass kicked by a one-armed person. Every guy wants to pretend or imagine or fucking in their mind that I'll kick the fuck out of any dude with one arm. Fuck that shit. So I think that subconsciously maybe Dana White doesn't like pushing that because the masculine, tough MMA fan isn't fucking ready to see that shit. What do you think about that angle? You know, it's funny because I, I love the way Nick answered the question if he thought that it was a lose-lose situation. I think he handled that perfectly. Right. He says, of course, to lose because they're going to lose. But he did say it is a lose lose situation. If you lose a fight against a one arm man, well, you lost to a guy with one arm. If you win, you beat a guy with one arm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is an interesting thing. But now we have WME IMG or whatever the fuck they're called over there. And 
they love circuses. So why mm. not throw a Nick Newell in? I, it doesn't make any sense. I think the guy could hang. I don't know with the top five in the UFC, but I mean, unranked going into, you know, maybe top 15. I think Nick could hang. I really do. Well, you know, you got to fucking say, if if they threw CM Punk in there and he got fucking embarrassed the way he did, Nick Newell's a legitimate MMA fighter. You know he could at least go and win a couple of fights. Now, besides the Nick Newell thing, I just wanted to say this, Chris. Yes. No, no, notorious. <laughs> Dude, did you fucking see the Netflix special, the, the Notorious movie? Yes. Holy fuck. I came home on Sunday night after dropping off my daughter and I was pleasantly suggested to view the fucking notorious Conor McGregor movie, man, God damn it. If that doesn't make you love and appreciate that guy, that fucking scene where there's a, the fucking Irish debt collector letter that he's getting, the way that he just took on every fucking challenge and won every fucking fight, you know, he was fighting with a bad knee, never fucking pulled out, got choked out by Diaz, lost the first two rounds, ended up fucking winning the next two and just like, or no, he won the first two rounds, lost the second two, and then fucking eked out that win. And then, you know, he just won the belt. He fucking knocked out Aldo. He won the belt from Alvarez. And then he goes and makes 100 million fucking... How the fuck can you not like this guy? I just got... I'm going to finish with this. If you don't like Connor, you're a fucking hater. <laughs> there you go. Jose, thanks for the call. There you go. Jose calling in. Now, I have a uh, later death stroke. Thanks for watching. I have my opinions on the uh, Connor movie. I'm a Connor fan, right? But I'm a realist. I'm an absolute realist. And we actually, what we did was I did a live reaction stream to the Connor movie. Like when it leaked, I did a little reaction stream to it. And I have to say, I didn't like it. I didn't like the Connor movie. I kind of thought that it was a cop out. I thought that the. We saw a lot of this stuff already within the embeddeds and some of the Mac Life photos, uh, videos, and they kind of just smushed it together with a couple extra things. The one thing I did like about Notorious Movie was when he saw that Aldo got hurt and he's like, you know, well, what's next, boss? Let's go. Who, who, who am I fighting? And the whole, um, you know, that, that whole situation with Chad Mendez and he was just ready to rock. He fought injured Connor. You know, that was really cool to see him, his first reaction when he found out that Aldo pulled out of the fight. That was cool. That seemed genuine. It seemed crazy, you know, what was going through his head. Other than that, though, the movie, yeah, there's a Connor movie, Mystic Mitch. It's called The Notorious or some shit like that. Honestly, mm, I don't, I honestly didn't think that was, it was that good. Here's the thing with me. People are like, oh, Chris, you're you're a Conor McGregor nut rider. Yes, I am a huge Conor McGregor fan, but I'm a realist. When he did the press conference with Ariel Hawani, I cringed fucking hard. In fact, I did a video reacting to that saying that this is garbage. I got lit on fire by super duper Conor fans. Okay. The Notorious movie I thought was a huge money grab. You don't make that movie until the story's over. The story is not over yet. They rushed the end of the movie. No spoiler alerts. I mean, you know what happens. You know who conor mcgregor is but they kind of rushed the whole floyd thing at the end i feel that his story needs to be complete until you make that movie and they made the movie and they're probably going to make another fucking sequel to it and it's just a huge cash grab credit to conor for getting paid for making that cheddar but i thought it sucked i kind of thought it sucked that's just my opinion over there we're gonna take a couple more calls and that's right jesse has canceled her show so it is what it is. You guys are stuck with me. I'm going to take this. I'll take this another half hour. Let's take some phone calls. If you want to talk about UFC 223, I can go through some topics. I just planned on doing the Notorious thing uh, with Nick Newell, and it was good. If you missed Nick Newell, run it back. I think we learned a lot from Ah, oh, super chat. Tommy Bones jumping in. I did the Patreon. Do I get a cookie? How's that work? <laughs> now, Tommy Bones, I sent you through Patreon. I might have to send you another link. If you are a patron, okay? You get our Discord access as well, and I think you are the $2 Patreon, so you do get a Discord access. So, yeah, I sent you a message through there. If the link does not work, check out Patreon. You're going to have a message over there. If the link doesn't work, I'll send you another link, and you'll come into our private Discord where we give out hand jobs and we finger blast all the young ladies in there. But, yeah, our, we have a Discord for our Patreon. And, by the way, thanks for jumping into the, uh, the Patreon during Fuku Friday. 
Uh, you guys killed it. You absolutely killed it over there. Justin, if you are watching in the chat, mm, Alexa called you. I didn't ask style. So we'll get you on the show soon. But uh, yeah, fucking Alexa, piece of shit. All right, 516-522-0267. Getting on the lines. I have to ask the question in the chat. What is everyone's fascination with Jesse? Like, it's a deal. It's a little creepy. I don't know. You guys are fucking weirdos. I like trolling, but you guys are like borderline creeps. It's kind of weird. You're live with the MMA Holes. What's your name and what's on your mind? Hey, Christopher. Yes. What's the news for the MMA world? The MMA, what's the news for the MMA world? Right. Okay, what is, so what do you want, the latest in the MMA news? Yeah. Okay. What would you like to know about? Would you like to know about something in 223? Two, what would you like to know about? Yeah, what's the next card coming up? Oh, we got uh, Khabib versus Tony, right? We sure do. Khabib versus Tony. Joanna versus Rose. That shit's fireworks. What's, what's I got, um... What do you got? Did you see that, um... The last card was UFC London, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's going on with you? Volkov, like I said, is ranked number third now. Yeah, okay. So he set up for a big fight. Sure. And um, the other dude, what's his name? Chan Blackowitz. Mm -hmm. He's ranked fifth now. Yeah, well, Volkov is, is very impressive. Volkov is, is doing some things, making some moves at number three. And he's up there. He's not ready for a title yet, but he's there. He's up there, you know? Maybe a fight away. We'll see what oh, happens. All right, thank you for the call. Chat. Not sure what just happened there. BK. No hater. Diaz fan. F. Connor. Early points to Chris. <laughs> BK Road is putting points in Fuko on Friday right off the bat. Thank you. You're wonderful, wonderful. Two points for Fuko on Friday. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank wonderful. you, BK Rhoda. The two early points. We should start off the next game with two early points. Thank you. There he goes. BK Rhoda with the super chat. Hey, guys, thanks for the donation sign. I do appreciate it. It gets a little cringy with the show. So basically, when I have uh, fighters come on, I, I speak to them beforehand and I say, hey, listen, it's going to get interrupted. The donations are how we fund the show, it's how we keep it going. So yeah, it sucks, you know? But it is what it is. Eventually, we can do this where we're not going to need the donations, but I do appreciate all the support, and it adds extra cringe. We started this channel as a cringe channel. If you look at this chat room over here, it's the cringiest live chat on MMA chat on YouTube, the MMA holes. I mean, that's the point of the show. Massive cringe. Um, yeah. You know what? Shan Wood, we didn't. We have 52 likes, and let's break it down. 10 more likes. Ten more likes. I've got ten more likes. I've got ten more likes. I've got ten more likes. Fuck you, dislikes. I've got ten more likes. I've got <laughs> ten more likes. I've got ten more likes. I hope the dislikes die of AIDS. There we go. Ten more likes. Ten more likes. Thank you very much for the ten more likes. And uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so I have to ask you guys a question in the chat. I see people. It sucks. Unfortunately, people have problems uh, in the community with females. I don't know what it is, but every time we have females on here, they need to light them on fire. I have to say something real quick. Ever since Jesse has come to the channel doing the collaboration, we've grown exponentially to eight over 8,000 subscribers. She grew past 2,000 subscribers. Uh, as a team, we've been able to grow both channels very quickly. And whether you like her or not, whether you like me or not, it doesn't matter. You could thumbs up, you could thumbs down, knock yourself out. I just don't understand. There's, there's trolling, and then there is it just it, there's cringe. You know, it's maximum cringe. It's, it's almost like stalker oh, shit. Super chat. That I'm not understanding over there, but whatever floats your boat. Minus two points for Jesse Bell Hill. MMA holds number one. <laughs> You, how dare you, BK Rhoda? It's terrible. Thank you, BK, for the wonderful, wonderful donation. Let me know in the chat. This is what I want to know here. Now, ever since Jesse's come over, she's been part of the show in, in many ways. She does the after show. She does a Monday show. And she was nice enough to, usually the, the 9 o'clock spot is her spot. But because Nick could only come on at a certain time, I wanted to get him on for the MMA holes. And that's that. But, yeah, maybe they are gay. I, I don't, 
I don't like you, Chris. I love you, says Triscuit. I like the trolling, okay? I enjoy the trolling. When it's funny, you know, and even if it's extra cringy, it's cool. I don't understand. Thank you, T-Man, for the love. I do appreciate it. And T-Man, man, you're up a little bit late. I'm going to tuck you in. But um, I don't I don't get... I, I just, I'm just trying to figure it out. What gives an example, Chris? Uh, this is Brian Roy. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I just, I'm just trying to figure out, like, there is trolling. <laughs> Hashtag replace. So you guys are saying kick Jesse off? Is that what you're saying? I, I mean, I, I don't get it. Jesse gets a lot of love. If you notice Fukar Friday, I mean, there is white knight and like a motherfucker going her direction with the donations. Jesse, she has an audience, you know? It may not be for everyone, but that's fine. You know, you're, you're cool. It's cool to fucking troll and fuck with people. I don't understand when you hit below the belt and you try to do like malicious shit to try to ruin someone's life. That is something that doesn't make sense. The channel is built off of trolling, but trying to ruin someone's life. I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. So to those that are out there that are doing that stuff, maybe you should take a step back and just reevaluate your life. You know, it's cool to be a douchebag because I am a number one douchebag. You're going to see a 223. I'm a big fucking douchebag. I'm a big fucking douchebag, but it's 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 a little stupid. So it's, it's a little stupid. Anyway, uh, you gotta rap one on one show. Joe McKenzie jumping in. You on the other shoulder, and you're gonna need a fucking army to come take them belts off me. They troll Jesse because they wish they could fuck her, but <laughs> know that they have no chance in hell. That's true. A big part of the reason I donate points to her is because the trolling is too much. Ninety nine percent of the time. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's so true, Sean. It is true. Guys, listen. I know some people have problems in life, you know, where you're, you're not satisfied and you got to try to ruin other people's lives. I don't understand why you would want to just tear someone down. Like, that's the thing. Like, why would you want to ruin someone's life? Let me ask you a question. And, and I don't want to get to this dark hole, but I just want to ask you this question. Like, suicide, okay? Suicide's a big problem. You know, it's Chester Bennington. People of, you know, some people have friends. I know people, a lot of people, uh, there is a, a viewer of the show, I'm not going to say his name, but actually called in a friend of his committed suicide. You never know. You never know what you can say to fuck with someone. You know, there has to be some sort of line. No, I mean, listen, we go pretty far over here, but it's all in good fun. And then there is the other group and it doesn't make any sense. I, I, I don't get that. So listen, I'm cool with the trolling. I'm down with the trolling, okay? But just try to be funny about it. Try not to just ruin people's lives. It, you know, doesn't make any sense. With that, I'm going to dead it. Let's open up the phone lines. I'm going to take you for another 26 minutes, and then we're going to shut this shit down. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. 66 watching now. Anyone in the chat from FAA, hit me with the ones in the chat. I want to see what the FAA is about, and uh, let's do that. 516-522-0267. I know a lot of people are jumping in, and I had to cut a couple off. Get in on the lines right now. Thank you again for the donations, man. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Another dox in the person. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it is what it is. Yeah, Craig, like, say, let me ask you a question, Craig. Hypothetically speaking, knocking on wood, Jesse Bellhill offs herself. Let's be serious for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close the phone lines. Let's let's be serious. If Jesse Bell Hill offs herself. Let me ask you a question, Craig. What would you do? Would you just go on with your life and try to ruin someone else's life? That's what I want to know. Why relentlessly attack someone that you that's out of your league? Doesn't make any sense. Just move on. Find some pig or something. I don't know. Right? Just move on. Silly. 516-522-0267. I'm done with this. You hurt my feelings, Chris. Listen, I like trolling. But come on, guys. Enough's enough. It gets a little stupid after a while. <laughs> this is dark. Put on some corn. Well, yeah, I can I can use a little corn right now. Y'all want a single say? Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Anyway, there you go. Chris, you and Jesse are awesome people. Uh, you're great people. And H, I do appreciate the support. Listen, this is not a dick sucking contest out over here on the MMA holes. It's not like, hey, we need to be patted on the back. I love the trolling. You guys call me Danny Baducci, uh, Ginger, uh, fucking Graybeard. It's all cool. It's fun. But sometimes I don't understand why you put people in those situations. 
Uh, four seven five. You're live with the MMA holes. What's your name and what's on your mind? What's up, Chris? It's Rob. Rob, what's going on, man? Nothing. Yeah, sitting here playing some Fortnite. Just listened in on uh, the interview with Nick. There you go. Oh, Robinelli. Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, brother? Yeah, I, I don't know if you caught the part where Nick spoke about you real quick. So you're gonna be the next best thing. I'm hearing. Hey, man, I'm pushing for it, man. I'm going in there and busting my ass, dude. So we'll see what happens. See what he has playing for me. <laughs> now, all right, so you're on Fortnite, so I guess we're going to have to get you. I don't know if you're subscribed to the gaming channel. There's a link in the description. We're going to have to. We had Justin on the gaming channel. Uh, we need to get Rob in on our Fortnite escapades. Are you any good? Can you build? Can you shoot? What's your... Oh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm pretty decent. Okay, I'm terrible. Yeah. Um, I'm absolutely terrible. Rob, what is it There's like... Certain... Go ahead. I was there's certain there's certain settings you got to go into settings and turn on like turbo build and I was I was doing a little bit of YouTubing and uh, I found a little bit of, a couple secrets so kind of helped out. Mm, well, there you go. Nick you Newell go. is your coach over there, running FAA. Nick Newell runs yes, FAA over there. Now maybe you can give us the other side of the story. Nick is a is a badass. Is it intimidating having a guy in control of this gym that is completely confident in himself? 14 and one the guy does not lose and uh having this guy here um training you guys i mean first of all it's got to be an honor right to be to be trained by a guy like this and an inspiration i'm sure as well but what is it like with uh having nick newell as your coach it's it's pretty good man i, I mean i shouldn't say pretty good it's amazing um you know it's, it's great opportunity uh he's he's very very smart he's very good at what he does um the knowledge that he shares with all of us and, you know, the time that he invests with everybody, um, it's pretty top notch. I mean, I really kind of, I wouldn't go to any other school. Like I said, you know, from the first, uh, in the first interview, you know, I waited for him to open up the, open up the school because I really wouldn't go anywhere else. So, um, I mean, that just goes to show, I mean, really where my head's at with it. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, Nick is a badass, and I've said this before uh, in, during the interview that, listen, how could you not be inspired by a guy like this, right? How could you not be? No, he's, he's overcome, overcame such a huge obstacle. He's got swag, and he's doing his thing. What do you think about him belonging in the UFC? Oh, absolutely, it's well deserved. You know, he's fourteen and one, and he's fourteen and one for a reason. You know what I mean? He's gone out there, he's done his thing, he's proved it fourteen times, and I think it's, I think it's well deserved. I think Dana White needs to pull his head out of his ass. And uh, I see in the chat, uh, Pulse Reloaded says, Nick, can Nick beat Justin's ass? Who would win in a fight, Nick or uh, Justin uh, Sumter? Well, that's hard to tell, man. <laughs> that's hard to tell. That's a fishy one. Nah, yeah. That's a fishy one. The Fort. That's another one, right? He, he, he needs oh, yeah, a shot. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, he's, he's long. He's lanky. He's got reach. He's, he's got strength. I mean, and just like you said before, you know, he, Nick's an absolute monster on the ground. So, you know, that can, that can go either way. Mm-hmm. Now we're live with uh, Rob Anulli, who uh, trains out of FAA with Nick Newell. Nick was on earlier today, and I, I think he was awesome. I, seriously, I have to say I met Nick a couple of times at some of the, the CES and Premier FC events. Uh, nice guy. I like the fact that Nick, he doesn't give a fuck. Is he always horsing around with you guys at the gym? Is he always, like, goofing around? Stuff, oh, yeah. Or is he old business? That's, just, that's his personality, man. He's just. He's all for busting balls, but at the same time, he also cares. You know what I mean? But mm. that's that's his personality. That's how he is. I, it was really cool. I really wanted him on. I wanted him on from the beginning when we started the streams, and it's it was. No, really I, cool. no I remember you asking me to try to get him on a couple of times, <laughs> and you know he's just he's so busy with everything he has going on and training and focusing on uh, you know getting back to where he needs to be. So, I mean, it's pretty cool that you got him on now, finally, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was it was a long time, and I think it was perfect timing. I really do. I think the way uh, right now coming back in, honestly, I thought he would come back and win, but I didn't think it was going to be the way it was. He came oh, in. Oh, no, that was de- that was a that was devastating fashion. Was was it shocking to see Nick go in there and just just make easy work in that first round? Did you believe uh, he was going to pull it off like that? Oh uh, yeah, you know what? I had a lot of confidence in him. You know, he's been he's been working super hard. Um, you know, he's busted his ass all through training camp. Um, yeah, I knew he was going to go in and dominate. I knew this this, this guy really wasn't anything for him. He, I mean, his opponent was definitely a tough grinder. You know what I mean? He's a tough fighter. He knew what he was doing, but Nick just Nick topped it off. Yeah, Nick. I mean, and I loved how he dropped the mic. It was on Access TV. Did you guys go to the events or? Were you watching from? No, um, 
you know, me, Justin, and a couple of the guys, and, you know, um, I shouldn't even say a couple, the whole fucking team, we went over to uh, Orange Ale House in Milford. And we sat down and watched it. I mean, there was so many fucking people there. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Now, we're live with Rob and Oli, who trains, trains out of FAA with Nick Newell. If you missed the Nick Newell interview, run it back. When the stream is done, you can go check that out. It starts right from the beginning. And uh, we went a good while with Nick over there. Um, yeah, you got yeah, you got about an hour for something. Yeah. I, I was I was surprised. It was like riding a Bronco. I was waiting. You know what it is? I had to hit him with some of the questions. I, I feel- You're going to wrap one on one on shoulder? I'm going to wrap the other on the other shoulder? <laughs> You're going to need a fucking army to come take them belts off me. Sean McKenzie dropping. Craig, just continue sitting in your mom's basement, (laughs) jacking off you pathetic little limp dick to the smell of your own farts. Yeah. While (laughs) covered in Cheeto dust, JBH is awesome. (laughs) There you go. Thank you, Sean McKenzie. Rob, it's ridiculous. We have a chat room, and there's some people in the chat. It's not majority. It's just like two people. But they, they say the dumbest shit, like... They, they're like, it's like when you're in a schoolyard and you're in like fifth grade and you're like, ew, girls, you know, and you fucking throw rocks at them and shit like that. It's so bizarre what they're doing in the chat because there's like one female in there. It's so ridiculous. Do you have to deal with internet like, trolls? Like, like five, like five year old immature little boys in a schoolyard trying to pick on a little girl. It makes no sense. It really is ridiculous. Thank you, Sean, for the donation. Um, what the fuck was I saying? I was saying something. It was really important, and I don't even know what happened. <laughs> Unless I old train of thought. Anyway, uh, Rob, yeah, so we got to get you on Fortnite, man, on the second channel. Uh, if you do have free time, we'd love to do that. Oh, what I wanted to ask is um, when you guys get together, it seems like a huge, tight-knit family, and it looks like you guys go to these bars. Anytime there's a big UFC event, you guys get together, and you go to the bar, and you, you kick back, have a couple of drinks. What's it like? Do you get everyone there? Does Nick go with you guys to these fights? Um, yeah, Nick, well, Nick, Nick pretty much, you know, sets everything up for us and, uh, you know, it's just, it's a go from there, but, you know, he goes out of his way to do all of the, all of the planning for it. He makes the phone calls, you know, he gets everything set up for us, you know, and it's, you know, that's also an honor to have as well, you know, because you know, half the time, you know, they charge people for watching a fight like that. So, you know, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's definitely, it's a benefit, you know, he's, he goes out of his way to do stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. I tell you, one day I want to set shop up, uh, drop by your gym, and maybe uh, bring some equipment over there, and maybe do a, a podcast from the gym, from FAA, and just grab some of the killers over there to come on. If you guys are interested in that, maybe we'll set that shit up. What do you think, uh, Rob? Oh yeah, for, oh yeah, for sure. Definitely talk to Nick about that. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to hop on. That'd be awesome. All right, so Rob and Uli, uh, stay tuned. Is there anything in the works right now? Now I know you're you're training really hard. I see a lot of your uh, videos. Rob is, I'm trying to find you on Instagram. I know I follow you over here. Let's see. Let's pull you up. Yeah. What is in the future? Bobby Fresh underscore MMA. What is I'm going to give you a quick plug. What is in the future? What are you looking to do? Uh, when are you looking to get into that cage and compete? Um, you know, right now, you know, just to start off for, you know, amateur league. I mean, really, I'll take any league, you know, when Nick thinks I'm ready. But, you know, future-wise, either Bellator or UFC, definitely for sure. Are you itching? I mean, you got to be really itching. Like, are you like, come on, Nick, man, I want a shot? Or are you patient uh, in trying to get, get get out there? Well, the one thing I learned um, with Nick is, you know, there's definitely a lot to be worked on. You know, um, I have little things that definitely, you know, I have to nitpick at. Um, but, you know, I've learned patience is definitely a virtue. So, you know, I'm taking my time. I'm focusing on what I need to focus on. I'm letting him, you know, guide me in the right direction. And so far, so good. So, Whenever he gives me the okay to go, I mean, I'm ready to go. So, you know, whatever, whatever, it's, it's his word. There you go. All right, Robin Uli, thank you for the call, man. I appreciate it, and good luck in the future. Uh, look to get you actually on the MMA holes one of these nights when you are defending these straps and uh, in the UFC. That's for sure, Chris. Thanks, buddy. All right, Rob. Thanks for the call. There is Robin Uli. Uh, check him out. Yeah, give him a little plug over here. Uh, Bobby Fresh underscore MMA. He trains at a M, uh, FAA. Uh, and yeah, Nick Newell, Justin Sumter over here. This gym is actually putting together some interesting fighters and, um, who knows? Maybe, just maybe, Robin Uli will be, uh, the next best thing. So did Nick Newell already come on the show since KMX? Yeah, we had Nick on for a little over an hour, actually. He took one call, but he, we, we, we kept, we kept him in here. We kept him in. It was, it was actually nice for Nick to come on. Nick has been on TMZ. He's been on Ariel. He's been, um... Shit, he's been on everything. Absolutely everything. Um, by the way, Jeffrey Dahmer. 
I don't want to say his channel, but you guys know who he is. Most of you guys know who he is. Uh, fucked up something with uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ with felony. Uh, I texted felony. I'm thinking about getting felony on Wednesday on the Wednesday show. I also got to reach out to Chase Sherman, man. I keep on forgetting to to hit him up. I got his number. I think I'm gonna shoot him a a uh, a ring. We we'll get Chase uh, Sherman on. Um. We'll see how that goes. But Felony, I'm going to try to get back on Wednesday because he's got a crazy fight coming up. That shit is going to be bonkers. It's um, this nutty fight in Florida. It's a Florida card. We'll get more information. But basically, it's porn meets MMA. It's a free stream. And if you want to donate to the actual... You can watch it for free, but if you want to donate for tokens, you could actually choose what the fighters do in the fights. And you have UFC fighters and Felony is the co-main event of that thing. So if you want to see Felony back on Wednesday night, hit me with the ones in the chat. Is Craig Lee doing well, says KMX? I don't know, man. He's too busy fucking saying nasty things to women on Twitter. So maybe, um, I don't know. Maybe he's all right. Who knows? Uh, sounds good, man. Darth and I were talk, uh, blah, blah, talking about you earlier, wondering where you've been. I don't know who we're fucking talking about over here. Ba, 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 ba. What else do we got? We only know one name since Steve Sparks. Yay. Got that crazy crackhead back on his vodka. Yeah, I mean, that guy was, he was, he was money. Felony was fucking money, man. Porno card. Jay Smooth, you're all over that shit. I mean, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Maybe we'll do a, a fight buddies for that. I was really thinking about going to, to the event and like doing something hosting wise or some shit like that. And I'm like, fuck this. I'll just do a fight buddies for that shit. Sean, oh yeah. Sean doesn't like felony. So there you go. No, 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 no. All right. <laughs> Sean is not down with that. <clears throat> Put felony on Friday. I'm working Wednesday says Craig. So Craig says he wants him on Friday. I mean, we could do that. Craig, we could do that. It's possible. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I didn't, here's the thing. Uh, guys, and here, you know, shout out to Nick. I'm going to wrap one on one shoulder. Sean I'm going to wrap the other on the other shoulder. And you're going to need a fucking army <laughs> to come take them belts off me. I won't be watching Ben, bro. <laughs> Boot cam. All right, Sean. Listen, he's not everyone's cup of tea. Here's the funny thing. And I got to give a shout out to Felony. I got to give a shout out to Felony. And the reason why is the guy's off his rocker. The guy's nuts. But he, so far, I am the only one that did not piss off Felony. I did not piss him off. We got along. I don't know what that says about me or my show over here, but we got along. I've spoken to him off air. He's a good guy. Um, but, you know, someone else said the crazy horse thing, and that was it. Felony hung up on him. Fucking funny shit, man. Good for Felony. Stand up for yourself, Felony. But, yeah, he's not for – listen, this show is not for everybody. You know, in certain situations, some people want to duck out gets a little too cringy or it gets a little too boring with the interviews. Ah, oh, super chat. You can duck out, but Sean, hopefully you stay around. All right, Best post fight ever is not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> not surprised, motherfuckers. There you go. That says BK Rhoda. Uh, name that fighter. I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. There you go. Thank you, BK Rhoda. I appreciate the donation, man. You guys are killing it tonight. All right, we're going to go on for 11 more minutes. I'm going to take a couple more calls. I'm going to wind this thing down. Thank you for watching. Unfortunately, Jesse cannot stream tonight, but Wednesday night we'll be back in business. So there you go. Uh, you're welcome, says Darth. I will give you that credit, Darth. I will give you that credit. Keep working. By the way, people are working on Darren Till. He's been responding. BLT, keep working that shit. Uh, 812, you're live with the MMA Holes. What's your name? Where are you from? What's up, Chris? Oh, no. Is this one eye Billy? Fucking Billy, Chris. What's up? <laughs> Jesus Christ, where have you been? We've missed you for so long. Oh, my God. I have been doing a lot, Chris. I've been playing circle of <laughs> drinking game, drinking a lot of beer. <laughs> I, yeah. it's, a, it's a big night for me. I got engaged the other day. Oh, did you really? How'd that go? It went pretty good, Chris. Yeah. It went pretty good. One eyed Billy's going to be. Married one eyed Billy. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways, hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I missed your ass. And I, mm. I got someone I want you to talk to. Sure, sure. I miss you too. I got, hey, I want you to talk to the mastermind that invented one eyed Billy in the first place. Okay, go ahead. His, his name's Davey Geiger, and I think he's got something interesting to say. All right, Davey, get on here. Well, how, how, how you doing today? I'm doing good, Davey. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just fine myself. Okay. So, so what's up with this one-eyed Billy fella? Where'd you find him? 
Oh, hell, he's been my friend for a long time. I got all fucked up with him at the fair one time. Yeah. It was a damn good time. Fucking kind of fair right to Star Trooper 52 times. Why not? Yeah. Now, One-Eyed Billy sounds like quite the character. You sound like a character yourself over here. You guys must have some good times hanging out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, right. you can have a cigarette. Yeah, all right. So what are you guys doing? What's going on over there? You guys having a party on a Monday night? <laughs> yeah, we're just hanging out, drinking yeah. some beers, doing, <laughs> you know, whatever. It's a normal Monday night, right? Is this a, a, a weekly thing that you guys do? What would you say? Yeah, is this a, a regular thing on your Monday nights? Uh, what I barely says to tell you that casual fan must uh his panties in his back seat. Yeah. <laughs> now, who's over there? Who's hanging out with you guys right now? Oh, it's just, just me and one eye belly and his old lady. Now, what happened? Is, uh, his one eye, which eye is the good eye and which eye is the Every bad day, eye? Hey, goddamn day, old time. You're going to wrap one on one which shoulder? Eye, you're going to wrap you on the other shoulder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to need a fucking eye. Hold on, we got to come donation. take them belts off me. Hold on one second. Russian mail order brides and kidnapping victims don't count as marriages, Billy. <laughs> there you go. Russian mail order brides and kidnapping victims don't count as, mari count as marriages, says Sean McKenzie. So there you go. All right, um, so guys, I'm, uh, it's it's an honor to have you on here. And what did you say your name was again? My name, my name is David. David, okay. Now, Davey fucking Geiger. Davey Geiger, okay. Uh, any last words to the MMA holes? Any last words, you say? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you ask me about his eyes, his yeah. left eye got shot out with a pellet gun after a ricocheted off a pan we were shooting at one day. Mm-hmm. That sounds like it hurts. Did you take him to the hospital? I'm um, her. Did you <laughs> did you take him to did you take him to the hospital? Oh hell no, hospitals are for pussies. Yeah. <laughs> Afterward to say I think Bigfoot Bigfoot fucked him in the ass one time. At least that's what he claims. I believe him. He's back there somewhere. <laughs> where where do you guys live? Where I need to have a meet up where you guys are. Where where do you guys live? Oh, shit, man. We live in butt fuck nowhere on the edge of Indiana and Ohio. Oh, nice. Oh, so there you go. All right, Indiana. All right, cool. When we when we hit that area, we need to we need to throw back a couple of beers. It sounds like you guys would be a good time to hang out with. Oh, yeah. We're always a good time to hang out with, man. We're always up to something for shit. Yeah. All right. Well, who's your favorite UFC fighter? Favorite UFC fighter, you say? Yes. God damn it, fucking idiot. Well, well, shit, I'm going to have to say, uh, fuck, man, what's his name? I can't remember. Dude that fucking shattered his ankle on someone else's ankle. It was real funny. Anderson Silva. Anderson yeah, Silva, that's yeah. Anderson Silva. The All right. spider. The spider. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. All right, thanks for the call, guys. All right, there you go. All right, no problem, man. You have a good. You too. Uh <laughs> oh, God. It just gets better and better. There's one eye Billy's been, he's, he hasn't been around in a bit, and there he is coming in. With his buddy. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. All right. Here we go. Let's uh, let's open those phone lines. Oh, yeah. 516-522-0267. Get in on the lines right now. I need it. I need to hear it. I need to hear it. Five more minutes and we're going to shut this shit down. Thank you for watching. I don't. This is dysfunctional tonight. Absolutely dysfunctional. Uh, give them Jesse's spot in bed at the meetup if she's having health problems. Is New York, New York, whatever. You are live with the MMA holes. What's your name and what's on your mind? Man, I'm fucking disappointed. I, my call didn't get in earlier because <laughs> I wanted to ask that one arm motherfucker how I'm supposed to pass him a blunt to the left when he don't have a left hand. <laughs> well, that's a valid question. That is, I guess we have to have him back on now. To, so you can ask I him. know, right? I was I was extremely disappointed that my call did not get in on time because the calls that did get in were fucking bullshit. Yeah, that Myst was that was fucking awful. I'm sorry, that yeah. was bad. Mystic Mitch had the only call in from Australia, and he was very his, nice. He was okay, polite. his his call was actually good, but the other one was bullshit. Mm. Well, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, Jay, you know, you win some, you lose some, but it's all right because there's plenty of opportunities to attack another. Uh, innocent guest. Don't worry. We'll we'll line them up and you knock them down. 
And by the way, speaking of your guests, uh, you were talking about the porno MMA event. Yeah. I'm actually a little surprised you're not going because if I were you, I would go for the purpose of trying to get the phone numbers of all them porno bitches. Because you know they fuck like true professionals. So <laughs> I would try to get in on that shit if I were you. I tell you what, and uh, I uh, I spoke to my father, and I was like, yeah, I think um, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna become a porn star. I mean, YouTube's not really paying much. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna you know if the price is right. I'm going to host an event and then uh, maybe uh, hang out with the ring girls after the fight. I don't know. I don't know how the missus would think about that. But Well, uh, yeah. well, you have the right name, MMA Holes. You know what I mean? Like, you can host pornos inside of cages and call it MMA Hole Event. You know what I mean? You would think it's a match made in heaven. I actually went on Twitter. Check out the Twitter at the MMA Holes. And uh, I tweeted out to Felony, and it's Cam Soda is the name of the organization that's running this. I was like, yo, I know a guy. I know a guy. You need to fly me over there. That's all I need. You need to fly me over there, and that's that. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen this time around. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe if we get Felony back on, we'll discuss business and try to get the MMA holes in. I mean, it's a, it is a match made in heaven. for fuck. By the way, so you can donate, right? You can donate and have these fighters do crazy shit during the fight. And then after the fight, the ring card girls are going to be fucking shoving dildos up their twats, and you can donate to that, too. I mean, what better event, right? <laughs> I mean, I think it is a little strange that fans can donate tokens to, like, basically to want a particular outcome of a fight. At that point, it seems kind of staged, because it's like, how the fuck is he supposed to pull off a head kick if he's a jujitsu guy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That, yeah. Like, it's all... Yeah, like, see, it's going to get out of hand there, but as far as the ring girls go, I hope they fucking rape each other until a pro until one of their assholes fall out in the middle of the ring or some shit. Yeah. I, I would pay tokens for that, but, at, but like, as far as a fight, like, basically wanting a certain outcome, it's going to feel like pro wrestling at that point because you're staging it. Yeah. You know what? You bring a good point. I don't understand the logistics of it, and that's kind of what I want to get Felony on here. By the way, Felony's been fucking smoking some good stuff lately. I don't know if you've been watching his stream Go f subscribe to Felony's channel, Jay. Do you watch any of these streams? <laughs> what? Do you, and if you do, what do you think? I've 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 actually seen a few of them, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like even though whatever he's smoking is good, I feel like he smokes Sherm on the side because he has a certain look about him that has angel dust written all over it. That motherfucker don't smoke clean blunts. His blunts have something in them. Yeah, right. He seems like he is rocked, and he's in a training camp for this fight. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I need him back on. I fucking listen, Sean. I respect your opinion. I respect that you do not like uh, felony. I respect it. I really do respect it. But I fucking love the guy. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm riveted by the guy. I don't know. I mean, I think he's great, but who knows? I mean, it is what it is. He's not everyone's cup of tea. I was going to say, felonies, it's a felonies type of person where you either really like him or you despise everything about him. There's no in-between. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can totally see that. You know what it is, too? I'm a little biased, too. Speaking, it is a character. Speaking to him off air, yes, he's crazy, but he's way more subdued than this weird, crazy, lopsided glasses person that you see on screen. But it is what it is. He's trying to make an extra buck. You can't, you can't blame the hustle, right? I mean, beating women is a little... You know, maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, Jay, I, maybe I don't know. Maybe you may differ, disagree on that. Well, if you can make a career out of it, like uh, <laughs> like R. Kelly when he pissed on that girl, yeah, or like Chris Brown when he beat up Rihanna, or Ike Turner when he beat up Tina Turner, you know what I mean? Like or like or like uh, Jermaine Jackson when he used to beat up his kids and his wife. Mm -hmm. Some people know how to make a buck off of it, but you have to have the pimp mentality yeah. in order for you to go that far. Some people don't have a pimp mentality because they – here's here's the thing. There is a way to administer discipline without leaving evidence. Oh, like some people, super like, chat. Okay, let me go through you. this first. Yeah. It's all good. I'll still support you, bro. Thank you, Sean, man. Sean, you're awesome, man. Much respect to Sean McKenzie. <laughs> you are fucking awesome. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, Jay, go back to your thought there. At least he's honest. But, yeah, I mean, there's a way to administer punishment – without leaving evidence. Like, some people leave their woman, like, bruised up and whatnot. People don't know. There's a way you can you can discipline your woman without leaving any visible marks. You can put about three or four oranges in a long tube sock and beat the shit out of her. She won't have a mark on her when the cops arrive. You know what I mean? Because at that, at that point, the police will say, stop calling us. He's yeah. not doing shit to you. Did you did you ever think about starting a YouTube channel and how to get away with beating women? <laughs> have you thought about that? Or... 
I mean, I think it'd be. I, I, I have, but the only thing is, I need to garner enough of an audience for it because my mm-hmm. advice can't be, it can't be dished on the underground because then somebody can run with it and bullshit it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to, I have to have a certain audience for this because I can't have, I can't have like social justice warriors and white knights in that bitch because they'll be <laughs> yeah. scarred for life without all the advice. <laughs> Oh my God. I tell you what, this whole community can start a YouTube channel and I would subscribe in a second because the insanity that comes out of here is, is absurd. But, uh, Jay, any last thoughts? I mean, UFC 223 is coming around the corner. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, 223 is going to be a a stacked card. And not only is it going to be a stacked card, there's going to be a lot of people coming from Russia to see Khabib. You're going to have Mexicans coming to see Tony. You're going to have all sorts of, uh, motherfuckers there. So, even though everybody's going to try to prey on GBH, understand there's enough pussy in New York City to go around. You, yeah. you need to make sure you sample the whole ice cream shop. Don't just be greedy <laughs> with one flavor. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point there. A lot of Polish women are going to be there too. I know that neighborhood is Ab- rocking the Polish. Absolutely, it's going to be a crazy fight week. The card itself is going to be fine as long as nobody pulls out and as long as Usada isn't uh, stupid and does something dumb. But uh, like you said, it's going to be it's probably going to be one of the best fights of the year. I don't know if it's going to be as good as UFC 217 when they went to MSG, but I believe this card makes up for UFC 208 because you yourself went through that bullshit. There you go. All right, Jay Smooth, thank you very much for the. Are you coming to 223? What's the deal? I don't know if I got an official answer from you. Are you coming tonight? Well, I'll put it to you like this. Last year, I was actually in New York. Only thing is, I got caught up in pussy and lost track of time, so that was my fault. <laughs> so I do plan on being there. And since you're awesome. going to be in Brooklyn, you're going to be in the city I was in last year. So you can expect, well, all I'm going to say is I'm going to drop in, but I'm not going to tell you when. There you go. All right. There you go. Jay Smooth, <laughs> I hope I see you over there. And uh, yeah. And thank you. <laughs> Bring your coat hanger. <laughs> I'll see you later. All right. Jay Smooth jumping on the lines. That's the sixth band over there. All right, guys, if you missed the Nick Newell interview, you can run it back literally at the beginning of the show. There's no pre-intro anymore. So the live chat stays open. So you have a stage for your autism Uh, starting the show off with a bang. You can literally just rewatch and check out Nick Newell. What I want you guys to do is in the comment section after you do watch that interview, if you missed it or if you want to rewatch and see what you missed. Uh, let me know in the comment section. What do you think? Do you think that Nick Newell does truly belong belong in the UFC? Does he belong in Bellator, or does he not belong in either of them? If he should just compete where he's competing and call it a day, runs a great gym over there. FAA, uh, Justin of Fort Sumter. We're gonna get you on soon. Sorry, Alexa, ass styled you, and uh, go check out Notorious Newell over here on Instagram, on Twitter. On Facebook, uh, he's got a lot of things going on over there. And let's get him over to the UFC, man. We need to see uh, Nick Newell on the UFC. And if you miss this, I'm going to show you this really quick. Uh, I showed it before, but here's Justin Sumter with the head kicks on Nick Newell. Okay. I'm going to show you guys something. I'm here with uh, Justin Sumter, okay? And um, he's going to kick me in the head, okay? <laughs> here we go. He throws a head kick. Boom, I blocked it. <laughs> wow. Okay. He fast. throws a head. He can throw it faster. Boom. I block it. Wow. That's crazy. Throw it again. Go. Boom. Block. Now that's not Usman 30% right there. That's about 5% from the fort. I would love to see the fort come in with at least 75 to 95% on that kick. But yeah, it's about a 5%er. But he is blocking it. Blocked. Holy shit. He throws it again. Boom. I move out of the way. I keep my foot on the outside. He can't really kick me. Little things, you know? There you go. There you go, Justin Ford. This is, the video is all over the place, but there he is. Nick Newell was on the show earlier, and you can run it back for that. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for liking and the donations. How about that? The donations were fire tonight. Thank you so much for supporting the show. The new patrons, that's right. When you guys drop in a patron, well, I, will, I have a new song, and I improv every time. So check that out. Link in the description for the second channel, Not the MMA Holes. I have some ideas for Not the MMA Holes. It's totally different than this, right? We have a dysfunctional MMA circus over here, but on Not the MMA Holes, it's different. It's just we chill, we play music, you guys pick the music, it gets played, we play video games, we talk about anything, 
And I'm bringing fighters over there. We have Justin. We have Curtis Stout over there. And I want to bring some more people in. Hey, Robin Uli and whoever wants to jump aboard. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have you guys jump in on Fortnite or any other game. I like to play these group games over there. So that's that. Link in the description. Subscribe to Jesse Bell Hill, Kobe's Corner, who is back in business. Kobe is back in business. So TGIWs is coming back. Thank you to T-Man as well. And uh, lick my balls. Guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you Wednesday night. And always remember, don't be an a-hole. Be an M-M-A-hole. <laughs>